Live. Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop F deodorants, flowing cream, spray, and stick, suave hairdressing, and Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We miss Arlene very much tonight, but we have with us, we're happy to say, uh, what I'm sure she would consider her better half, Martin Gable. My wife took her morning show to Silver Springs, Florida, but with characteristic generosity, she left behind one of the most beautiful women in the world to sit next to me, Miss Hedy Lamar. Thank you. And now my favorite publisher and panelist, Mr. Bennett Sir. warm Arlene is finding it down in Florida, but it's very nice and warm right in the street tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and here to really try to make it terribly hot for us is our distinguished panel moderator, Mr. John Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. I have some good news for the panel to begin the program tonight. You don't have to blindfold yourselves. And we'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a bit later in the show when you can blindfold yourselves. And we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Stay tuned. There's more black and white. And now, panel, since next week you're going to have a vacation while we go out to the West Coast and do a program from Hollywood, I expect great things of you tonight. So see, we get ready for our first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, I suppose, is Jackie. Uh, Jacqueline Carroll. And is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Carroll. Well, it's a way to begin a new year, I always say. And Miss Carroll, where are you from? Miami. Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. Well, that's nice to have you here. What brought you up into the cold climes? Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I won't ask that question. Miss Carroll, the panel. <laughs> panel, Miss Carroll, will Just you come over here and join me? Miss Carroll, are you familiar with our scorekeeping yes, system? Yes, I am, thank you. That's fine. Then let's let everybody in the theater, except my four friends on the panel, and the folks at home know exactly what your line is. Carol is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Martin Gable. Miss Carol, do you deal in services? Yes. You do. Uh, do you... Are your looks in any way a factor in what you do? No. No. That's one no. down to nine to go, Miss Lamar. Do you deal with both men and women? Yes. Has your location anything to do with your occupation? No. No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Carroll, do you work usually inside rather than outside? I mean inside a building. Yes. Do you? Uh, would your work be done possibly at one of the countless hotels in the Miami sector? Sometimes. Sometimes? When you do work at the, in one of these hotels, uh, would it be in one of the public rooms rather than in a private room of a guest? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you come into physical contact with your, 
with the people that you are serving. Yes. You touch them. Uh, would this be cause you are doing something that would uh, improve their looks to some extent? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Carroll, does your work ever cause you to find out anything about anything? <laughs> Small conference. I knew we were going to get around to that too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The conference type of guess. Okay. Give it a... hmm? Sometimes, Doris. You sometimes learn something yes. uh, about the... Under certain circumstances, as the service is conveyed, it's possible that she might get some information which she is not necessarily seeking for any specific purpose, but she would get it as a matter of course. I see. Now, it seems impossible on the surface, looking at Miss Carroll, but is it possible that anybody could be disturbed by what you do or disconcerted? Or annoyed. Sometimes. Yes, Dorothy, we don't want to mislead you, but it, accepting that the service uh, is offered to those who voluntarily receive it, it is possible that on some occasions there might be a degree of disturbance in the receiver as a manifestation of the receipt of the service. Do you understand that, Miss Carroll? <laughs> Is there ever any sort of document involved in what you do? No. No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Gable. Has it been established? Uh, am I right in thinking that you are not self-employed? No, it has been established that uh, Miss Carroll is self-employed. I see. Uh, is what you do more uh, of a mental nature than a physical nature? I would think so, Martin. Yeah. Yes. yes, but right there is there. a... Excuse me. There was a great pity. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a humanitarian. But, uh, but um, it's mostly mental, but there is a physical aspect to what yes. you do. You do touch your customers, uh, yes. if that's the right way of describing them. Um, when you are through with, with your work with them, um, are they, uh, do they pay you right then and there? <laughs> Actually, I don't think that's necessarily uh, germane, Martin, to the problem that you face. How, the, the time at which any I payment see, yes, would be made for the service You do get paid, incident. however. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, has it anything medical? Uh, is there anything medical involved in it? Yeah. I hope you won't say yes, because I haven't a clue as to where I'm going. <laughs> well, this is a very difficult yeah. question to answer. I don't think we can say technically that there is something medical, although uh, there it is There is a is physical true. improvement involved. Well, this is possible. Miss Carroll might uh, be able to achieve a conclusion which medic medically might uh, be I determined see. to be beneficial. For example, there are certain sort of... Uh, Professions like fortune telling. Are you a fortune teller? No. No. Five down and five to <laughs> go, no. Mr. Ma. Do you um, do your work sitting down rather than standing up? Mm. No. That makes it six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Carroll, around the Miami area, there are all kinds of strange animals and fish. Do you have anything to do, possibly, with any of the uh, livestock down there that is not human? <laughs> <laughs> no. Not at the sea quarium or anything like that. This will be funny when you get the final answer here. Seven to, down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Carroll, do you ever take anything away from anybody? No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Gable. <laughs> do you ever give anything to anybody? No. Nine dollar one to go, Miss Lamar. Do you make them feel better by any chance? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, now, say? do you... What did she say? Does she... said no, not necessarily. No, not actually, necessarily? Yes. Sometimes. It would Possibly? depend on circumstance. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. sometimes. This is the aim, I presume? Yes. Good. <laughs> 
Well, now, um, uh, do you have to have a special uniform or wearing apparel? No. No. That's ten dollars, no more to go. Actually, Martin opened the door. If you developed that one, I think you'd have gotten. I know it's going to be difficult for you to have to swallow. Miss Carroll is a professional hypnotist and does work. <laughs> Did you really, Martin? I knew you were on the track, Martin. But that's well, what it is. Eighteen years old, mind you. I, I thought of it when I wasn't on. That's the story of my life. <laughs> no. I guess you're the youngest professional hypnotist in the country. And to, to explain, actually, Miss Carroll does work sometimes with doctors and dentists, but she also appears uh, in demonstrations in public, and sometimes in, in small groups, why to demonstrate the, the art of or the science of hypnosis. Yes. Well, we've stumped the panel, and we thank you very much. Thank nice you to have had you with much. us to begin. All right, Ken, let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Jan? <coughs> Bergendahl, right? <laughs> Where are you from? From Norway. From Norway. Well, that's fine. It's nice to have you used to this kind of climate, aren't you? I am. <laughs> 10 or 15 degrees above zero. Mr. Bergendahl, the panel. Panel, will you come over here and join me? Well, now, coming from Norway, are you familiar with the way we keep score? Yeah. Oh, fine. <laughs> that's good. Then let's let everybody here and there except the panel know what your line is. is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Bergendahl, uh, does uh, grace or agility or dexterity have anything to do with your profession? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Gable. Mr. Bergendahl, is there a product connected with what you do? Yes. Uh, is the fact that you're wearing a uh, naval blazer or a blazer with uh, an insignia of some kind, is that in any way uh, pertinent to your work? No. <laughs> you nodded your head yes. No, thank you. Uh, no, not directly, Martin. You may want to quibble with me later. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Lamar. Does your product have anything to do with sports, Ben Chen? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Bergendahl, does your product have anything to do with something that can be either eaten or drunken? <laughs> Drink. <laughs> no. Yes. It does. Would it be... Uh, in the li liquid line rather than the solid line? No. Nope. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is it something that's ever been alive? Yes. Does it come in cans ever? Yes. <laughs> By the time you get through with it, does it come in cans? Well, uh, he's along the line somewhere. Oh. Uh, has it, is it ever something that's been alive in water? Yes. Is it something in the fish family? No. That makes it five to, five to go, Mr. Gable. Take it away, Martin. Uh, but where is the question? Uh, it is something that has lived in water when it was alive, but it is not in the fish family. Yes. I see. Is it... Uh, do you work for a, a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, is it... Uh, is this thing that you sell, is it a Norwegian product? It can be, yeah. It can be, yes. <laughs> I mean, like uh, caviar could be Norwegian, I suppose, and uh, also but other it's countries. In the fish family, I think. Yes, it's in the fish family. I'm just mm. commenting because I don't know where to go. What would an eel be? Is it uh, reptilian? No. no. That's Nothing six. like salmon. Or no, there's six down and four to go, Miss Lamar. Oh. <laughs> do you, uh... Um, Comes up on you. <laughs> whatever that is in the water, you can. <laughs> do you, do you get, catch it yourself? No. You just... Well, I would, say, I would say this, if, if uh, you will permit, that actually uh, Mr. Bergendahl participates in the catching of it, although he does not necessarily catch it himself. 
But it is a, a something that is from the water. Yes. Lives in the water only. Yes. Rather than on a, above it. Yes. It could be plant life, couldn't it? No. Yes, please. Could. No, There'll be no fish. call for a conference, please. No, it's come uh, it's, uh, is it a popular product? A popular, popular product? Popular in America. Popular in America. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no, not, not in terms of... Uh, now, Mr. Pregnall, if I may uh, recapitulate for a moment. You said it was not a fish. Right. It was not a reptile. And yet it well, had been alive. It mm -hmm. was alive at one time. Would this creature or series of creatures be found way up north, possibly sometimes in the Arctic Circle? Yes. Is it uh, fur-bearing, or uh, does it have a very thick skin? As a... Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would it be any member of the... Uh, well, no, it lives only in the water, you said, not on the land at all? That's right. Uh, would it be in the seal or uh, seal family? No. Nope. That's no? eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would it be in the whale family, which yes. is a whale of a family, I must say. Yes. <laughs> now, this, this is actually uh, about whales, the product now. is a whale. What does Mr. Bergendahl do? Hmm? He's what? a whale canner. A whale canner <laughs> makes it nine down and one to go, Mr. A whale catcher. Whale catcher, a whaler is right. So we'll flip that one anyway. Now, it's about the matter of that naval blazer. Be beg pardon? About the matter of that naval blazer. Yeah. Well, isn't that... Well, that's why I said yeah. to you after the answer. Actually, it's not directly concerned because it is not something that's attached to his whaling career. It's, uh, it's attached to the sea, which is what I was trying yeah. to suggest. Now, John, to you. a whale is a mammal, but isn't it also considered a fish? No, no. no. never. Mm -mm. No, it's an aquatic mammal of the cetacean uh, origin. It's, it's you know, the last John of the red hot mammals. <laughs> I don't think I was worried about whether it was a fish or not, because I was. Well, thank you very <laughs> much, Mr. Bergenhoff. Nice to have you in. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of a mystery celebrity for which my friends on the panel are blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, John. Yes, indeed. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> to our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You will ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and let's begin with Miss Hedy Lamar. Are you in, in the entertainment world? Well, yes, you might say that. Mr. <laughs> Sir? <clears throat> are, are you a member of the cast of one of the big motion pictures playing along Broadway at the present time? Maybe way up on Broadway. <laughs> not, not, not right on Broadway, though. That's a fair answer, Bennett. Miss Kilgallen? What was the answer, John? I didn't hear Maybe it. Maybe way yeah, up on Broadway, but not right on Broadway. Do you have any connection with the world of pop music? Well, uh, yes, yes, I do. Uh, do you play an instrument? Well, I'll play a ukulele a little bit. Big pardon? Play a ukulele. Play a ukulele a little bit play on ukulele. that, and I hope nobody's injured. One down, Got nine to. to go. Miss Lamar. Did you ever make a picture in Europe? Uh, you mean no, 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 cinema, kind of? A yes. cinema, yes. No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Have you ever appeared in a roundup of uh, young stars who uh, leaned to rock and roll? Uh, you mean in the movies? Rock it and roll? either in the movies or on something like the Alan Freed Roundup at the Paramount Theater. Oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you sing? Yeah, yes, yes, you do, yes. Mr. Gable, uh, have you appeared in legitimate plays? Uh, no, sir, no, sir. Four down and six to go, Miss Lamar. Is your singing your main occupation at the moment? Oh, yes, yes, I think. It is. Mm-hmm, Mr. Sir? Are you, uh, have you appeared or are you appearing in a nightclub? Have you ever appeared on a Broadway nightclub? Uh, no, sir. No, five sir. down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Take a guess. 
Are you chiefly known at the moment for your popular recordings? Well, I've uh, sold quite a few, but uh, I'm no Bing Crosby or nothing. <laughs> no, I would say, to be fair, that uh, our guest is well known for his recordings, whether he is chiefly known for the recordings or another area of um, work would be a decision for you to make yourself. Mr. Gable. Uh, do you lead a band? Oh, no, sir. Six down and four to go, Miss Lamont. Do you act as well as sing? Well, I, I have in my time, yes. <laughs> Mr. Sir? You did at one time act as well as sing, you say? Well, he says he has at one time, yes. The supposition is that uh, the capability is there and is called upon. Have you ever specialized in either Western or Hillbilly songs? No, sir. No, sir. I, I didn't. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you be qualified to play sport and life in Porgy and Bess? Well, uh, depends on how it'd be written, you know, but I uh, don't, never, never been called on. So I think we'd have to give a no on that. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Gable. Uh, have you ever played in Porgy and Bess? No, sir, no, sir. That makes it nine down and one to go, Miss Lamar. Do you, oh, do you also dance? I can say a real strong no to that. <laughs> Ten down and no more to go. You should have gone to television. Pat Boone. <laughs> Actually, Bennett, I felt a little bit unfair, but you did specifically mention Alan Freed. I think you were in the area of, of the young singers who have come up in the last few years and certainly well, I said like Alan Freed. Band. I didn't say Alan Freed. Uh, no, actually, when you got to the descriptive, you said like Alan Freed, and he's never been on an Alan Freed show, so we had to give you a no on that. Well, well I was never in a rock and roll movie. You're never in a rock and roll movie either. But I think Bennett was getting into the area of young singers who have come to great reputation, and Pat is... I always thought you'd get to television. He's got uh, his own Chevy showcase on another network called ABC every week, and that's where <laughs> we thought we would really get found out, yeah. but we didn't get found out. Pat, um, there's one thing I want, if I remember correctly, you are one of that uh, very considerable, considerable group of young people who really got their first chance with Arthur Godfrey, didn't you? Yes, um, I did appear with Ted Mack once before, but um, that was a year previous, and then I appeared with Arthur Godfrey and uh, became a regular on his show, and it, it was a real solid send-off. Yeah, that's a great I school. I, I may say for a moment, something personal, when I first started in this game in Washington, uh, Arthur Godfrey, whom I knew not at all, did I think as much for me as, as he did for you. In my side, it was news. Every time I did a new show, he'd come in and criticize it, and sometimes <laughs> it was ruthless criticism, but it taught me a great deal. Oh, he's on. We're talking about great schools. I think uh, we ought to say that Pat Boone and I both are products Columbia University. Roar, roar lion, lion, roar. roar. Yeah. Go on, go on. I dare you. Go ahead. Go uh, with him. I right. could do the echoes of the Hudson Valley. Fight <laughs> on to victory evermore. <laughs> well, don't, don't get mad. <laughs> that was one thing, one thing more, Pat. That, John, uh, I was on this panel when a young man came on as a mystery guest and said that he was so thrilled to be on because he remembered that when he was eight years old, he used to watch this program. <laughs> now, <laughs> Mr. Boone has been graceful enough not to say that. <laughs> well, Pat has one more distinction, which I, I must say I'd like to mention before you leave us. He has one of the nicest fathers-in-law in the world named Fred Red Foley. I'll go along with you there, too. Yeah. Great to have a wonderful wife. How old are you going to have another youngster? Yeah, and, and February, if, we, if, we, if it's that long. I mean, I'll oh, take well, that good. long. <laughs> Congratulations and a happy birth to your new youngster and a wonderful new year Thank to you, you. It's been grand to have you with us. Nice to see you. And now, as I said earlier on, uh, next week, What's My Line is going to be a Hollywood program. We're going to originate on the West Coast. My friends on the panel are going to have a small vacation to watch me work to make up for that week I took off when I went overseas. <laughs> And Bing Crosby's been nice enough to uh, invite me out to be one of his friends on the Bing Crosby and his Friends program next Sunday at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and then we're going to go down to Los Angeles and do What's My Line. It'll be good to see our friends on the West Coast, and it'll be sort of fun to do it from 3,000 miles from here since we've been here for so long.
doing it in, in New York. Uh, I trust that my colleagues on the panel have a good, wonderful rest. I shall miss you, Miss Lamar. It was very nice to have you with us Thank tonight. So Hope we see you again when I get back. And until the week from Sunday, then, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, John. Good night, Morton. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Arlene, down in Silver Spring, Florida. And good, good night, night, Miss Lamar. Good night, Martin. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Bennett. <laughs> if it hadn't been for Hattie getting me intoxicated, I think I should have gotten Pat Boone. <laughs> I feel terrible about it. Good night, John. Good night, and good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line? If you'd like to be a contestant, send a picture we can keep and your occupation to What's My Line? CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22 New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines.